Yo, what's up? Dr. Swole here, MD, Pro Physique Athlete. Today I'm going to be giving a full six day hypertrophy program based on the push pull legs Arnold split. This is a hybrid split that combines push pull legs and the Arnold split into a six day setup. Both push pull legs and the Arnold split are popular setups for six days per week, but it is possible to combine these two into a single program. Push pull legs divides your body up into three days push day, pull day, and leg day. On push day, you train muscles involved in pushing movements, so chest, shoulders, and triceps. And on pull day, you train muscles involved in pulling movements, so back and biceps. And on leg day, you train your quads, hamstrings, glutes, and calves. In the Arnold split, we also have a three-day setup. We have chest and back, shoulders and arms, and legs. Both of these splits have their own pros and cons, and the idea is that in a hybrid split like this, you get a little bit of both worlds. This is a high volume program designed for the intermediate to advanced athlete. We'll start off with a program walkthrough where I'll share everything you'll need to know to run the program yourself, including exercises, sets, and reps. Then we'll go through the program weekly layout or how to spread out the days across the week. And finally, I'll mention some comments on this program. All right, let's do our program walkthrough. This is Dr. Swole's Push Pull Legs Arnold Split Program. It is a high volume program designed for an intermediate to advanced bodybuilder. We've got pull day, push day, leg day one, chest and back day, shoulders and arms, and leg day number two. Here are the exercises and there are the sets and reps. Down here with the total number of sets for each workout to give you an idea of workout length. And down here are the total number of sets for each muscle group each week. Let's start off with pull day. As you'll notice, I've swapped the order of the days from the conventional push-pull leg split, and we'll talk about the reasoning for my ordering later. We start off with cable rows for the back, three sets of six to 10. After that, dumbbell seal rows, also for the back, three sets of eight to 12. Dumbbell pullovers are a great way to end your workout since they are an isolation movement, so not as taxing, but they do put a big stretch on your lats at the bottom position. After that, we have dumbbell upright rows for the side delts, but also the traps, four sets of eight to 12. I do consider these more of a side delt movement, but I've lumped them in here as sort of a pulling movement. Then we've got machine lower raises also for the side delts, four sets of 10 to 15. Next we have push day. We start off with bench press for the chest, four sets. And we're using a top set back off method here. So you're gonna work up to one top heavy set of five to eight reps, followed by three back off sets of five to eight reps with about 10% lighter weight. This is your main pushing movement of the program. After that, we have dumbbell flies also for the packs, three sets of 10 to 15. After that, cable press downs for the triceps, four sets of 10 to 15. Then cable ladder raises for the side delts, three sets of eight to 12. And cable curls for the biceps, three sets of eight to 12. And you can superset these three cable movements. So basically just alternate sets of these with minimal rest. Finally, we have some dumbbell preacher curls for the biceps, three sets of 10 to 15. Let's look at some of the modifications I've made to the traditional push pull leg segment here. I've taken our bicep work and I've taken it off of pull day onto push day. And in replacement, I've taken some of our side delt work and moved it off of push day onto pull day. This allows us to train our biceps when they're fresh and not fatigued after pulling movements. And that addresses one of the major disadvantages of the push-pull leg split. Then leg day number one, we start off with Smith Machine squats for the quads, four sets of six to 10. After that, barbell hip thrusts for the glutes and hamstrings, three sets of six to 10. Even though hip thrusts are a heavier compound movement, I've placed Smith Machine split squats before them because quads are a higher priority in this program. Then we have lunges for the glutes and hamstrings, three sets of eight to 12 leg extensions for the quads, four sets of 10 to 15, and finally machine calf raises for the calves. We're using a my rep scheme here, so you're gonna work up to one main set of 10 to 15 reps, followed by seven mini sets of three to five reps with about 10 seconds of rest in between all of these. So those short rest periods will make sure that you're staying close to failure, and this is approximated as about five straight sets. Next, we're going on to our Arnold split segment of the program. So this first half was the push pull leg segment, and now we have our Arnold split segment. Starting with chest and back day, we kick it off with lat pull downs for the back, three sets of six to 10. After that, we have incline machine bench press for the chest, four sets of eight to 12. Then we have chest supported rows for the back, three sets of 10 to 15. Find a machine that fits well for you, just make sure that you can get a good stretch at the bottom of the movement and a full range of motion. Then we have cable flies for the chest, three sets of 12 to 20. Cable flies aren't my favorite for heavy progressive overload because there is quite a bit of instability in the movement. So I do recommend programming these for lighter weights and higher reps. Then we have machine pull downs for the back, three sets of 12 to 20. You'll see that in my back training, this first day is more biased towards horizontal rows with the first two movements being horizontal movements and dumbbell pullovers being more similar to a vertical pulling movement. Then on the second day when we train back, I have more of a vertical pulling emphasis 
with two vertical pulling movements and one horizontal pulling movement. Then we have dumbbell upright rows for the side delts and also the traps, three sets of 12 to 20. Going on to our shoulder and arm day, we started with weighted dips for the pecs, but also the triceps, three sets of six to 10. This is a really powerful advantage of this shoulder and arm day where we can take a movement that you can sort of count as triceps, but use it to get in more chest training. This gives you a lot of flexibility in your program. For example, you'll see on this pull day and our chest and back day, I've prioritized my back training on both days, putting our main back movement first. But the chest still gets plenty of emphasis because you have a bench press coming first on push day and then a weighted dips coming first on shoulder and arm day. So the shoulders and arms day allows you to program in some heavy accessory movements. Next, we have Smith Machine overhead presses, which mainly hit the front delts, but also a bit of upper pecs and triceps, three sets of eight to 12. Then we have dumbbell curls for the biceps, three sets of six to 10. You can do these bilateral or alternating. Then we have easy bar skull crushers for the triceps, four sets of six to 10. After that, rope hammer curls for the biceps, three sets of 12 to 20. And finally, cable ladder raises for the side delts, four sets of 12 to 20. Notice here that I snuck in some side delt work also on my chest and back day, and this allows us to build up a high frequency of four times per week for our side delts. This allows you to fit in more productive volume, and I do think a lot of people are lacking in their side delts. So it's nice to be able to get in more volume, especially in a high volume program like this. Then we have our second leg day. We start with Romanian deadlifts for the glutes and hamstrings, three sets of six to 10. This is gonna be the toughest movement of your program and I place it on this day for a reason, which we'll talk about later. Then we have hack squats for the quads, three sets of eight to 12. Leg presses also for the quads, four sets of eight to 12. You'll see that I put slightly more sets on the leg press than on the hack squat. And this is because leg presses are slightly less fatiguing. After leg presses, you can use the leg press machine to do calf raises. We're gonna do mile reps again here. So work up to one main set of eight to 15 reps, followed by seven mini sets of three to five reps. Finally, we have leg curls for the hamstrings, four sets of 10 to 15. Notice that in our leg training, this first leg day is relatively quad dominant whereas this leg day is relatively more hamstring dominant. You can try this out and see if you like it. If you want it to be a bit more balanced between the days, you could swap leg curls and leg extensions, and then you would distribute your fatigue a little bit better. Also note that this program has a relatively high amount of machine movements and lower fatigue movements. And this is to reflect that we're programming in high volumes, and this is for a more advanced person. So we want slightly less fatiguing movements so we can get in that volume. Okay, now that you've seen the program, let's talk about the weekly layout. You'll see that this is a unique split and I've made some special modifications to it. We have pull day, push day, leg day one, chest and back day, shoulders and arms, legs two, and rest. This is an interesting split to program. Let's talk about some of the nuances. First of all, you'll see that I've swapped push and pull days in our push pull leg segment. And I did this for a reason. First of all, back training and leg training tends to be your toughest training in the week. So I wanted to spread out my back and leg training in this program as much as possible. You'll notice that leg day and back training does come back to back at some point during the week, but this is better than other options where you'd have more back and leg training back to back. Also, it allowed me to make this unique modification where I took biceps off of pull day and moved it onto push day and then swapped it for some of our side delt training off of push day onto pull day. First of all, it allows us to train our biceps when they're fresh and not fatigued after pulling movements. Since biceps are used indirectly during your pulling movements, you tend not to perform as well on your bicep training when it comes after back training. This is one of the main disadvantages of the push pull leg split. When we split up our side delt training, it allows us to be more rested overall and fit in more productive side delt work. And it also rounds out our days since pull days tend to be relatively shorter when there are fewer muscle groups to train. Looking at the order of our Arnold split here, I like having chest and back day coming before shoulders and arms because as we mentioned before with the biceps, the biceps and the triceps are used indirectly with pushing and pulling movements. So if you put shoulders and arms before chest and back, your performance on chest and back training might be interfered with by sore arms. Notice that we do have a bit of chest training coming back to back here, where I had inclined bench press on chest and back day and then weighted dips on shoulders and arms day. But this isn't that big of a deal since these are our lower priority movements. Remember our main pressing movement, the bench press is on push day and inclined bench press favors the upper pecs whereas dips are a little bit more mid to lower pecs. Finally, notice that I put our toughest leg movement RDLs onto our leg day number two. And this is so that you won't be really fatigued going into this chest and back day and you'll have your rest day coming after it. In general, you wanna spend your rest days wisely. You'll ideally wanna place them after your toughest workouts. This is because any workout coming after this tough leg day may suffer in terms of performance. 
Okay, now let's go over some comments on this program. First of all, I like this program because it's more balanced than a straight push-pull legs. I think there are a lot of advantages to the Arnold split over push-pull legs. As we said before, on push-pull legs, it's not ideal how arms come after chest and back train. Through some of our modifications here, we're able to give biceps at least some priority. Next, we get a dedicated shoulder and arm day, and this feeds back into the last point, which balances out this program a bit more. I really like being able to focus on shoulders and arms on a full day, especially since a lot of naturals are lacking in their shoulders and delts. If you have enough days in the week to train like six days per week, it's not a bad deal to dedicate a whole day to shoulders and arms. Next, this program gives a bit more priority to pressing side delts and arms than a straight push-pull legs would. This is because on that shoulder and arm day, you have an opportunity to put in some accessory pressing, as you saw with our weighted dips and Smith Machine overhead press. I gave a bit more priority to side delt training by fitting in more volume and spreading it out over four days across the week. I do think side delts benefit from high volumes and high frequencies. This program also emphasizes arms a bit more than push-pull legs with that dedicated shoulder and arm day. Note that some of these advantages would be a little bit stronger in a full Arnold split, so something to consider if you have it. Finally, this program does require some auto-regulation. As you saw, we have a bit of chest training coming back to back later in the week. And whenever you're dealing with high volumes, you want to be able to auto-regulate. So learn to train to an RAR or repetitions in reserve rather than just going to failure on every set. Now, as I mentioned, the Arnold split might have even a bit more priority for pressing and arms. So if you want to see a pure Arnold split, check out this video where I explain a full six day hypertrophy program and do a full program walkthrough. You can get the Excel file for this program if you join my Facebook group. Link is in the description below. Join the group and you can download the program for free. Make sure you subscribe to the channel to transform your body and your life and we'll see you next time.